everybody, Muscle Car Campy here at the NMCA Muscle Car Mayhem Show. Everybody probably wants to know, what does Muscle Car Campy drive on a daily basis? Well, it's this fine, fine Pontiac G8 here. It's got 123,000 miles on it. I love this car very much, and it is phone stop, believe it or not, until today. Uh, last weekend, I put a K&N filter in it for the first time ever, which is kind of hilarious. It's the only bone stock car I've ever had. Today, we've got Tony Ganyan from Tuners Inc., who is going to put a new tune in here using HP Tuner software. So let's uh, see what he's up to here. Ganyan here. Tony, say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing? And this is my favorite. I've never seen one of these before. Look at that. He's got a thing that hooks right up onto the steering wheel. So he can work the laptop magic. Got a thing that's already plugged into the OBD2 port. Tony, what are you going to be doing here today? Basically, the first thing I'm doing is scan the vehicle and see if there's any codes or anything. You know, know if you got anything messed up or not. That's the first thing we're going to do. we check that as a diagnostic tool. It's an excellent tool to do this. So we can check to see if anything's wrong with it, take a look at the data, and work from there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to read the vehicle. We're actually going to take and read the processor itself. You can see on the screen it shows us it's a 2009 GT, uh, it's a 2009 Pontiac G8 GT, 6 liter V8. It tells us it's got an E38 processor for the motor and a T43 for the transmission control module. It's going to take about two to three minutes to read the actual processor. At that point in time, we'll save that file and then we'll look and see what we can do. Okay, everybody, here's the next step. Tony is going to save everything that's in the computer right now. Uh, we didn't find any faults, as expected. So he's working a little magic there. We're actually just finished reading the processor. Uh, we're going to name that the stock read as soon as we read it. Uh, so we got the stock read saved. Now the very first thing we'll do in the process is to rename that file, okay, modified one. Okay, that way we never mess up the original file. It's a very good habit to do because if you wanted to go back to stock, you wouldn't have the stock file. So that's why we always save the file first and then we save the file as a modified file. Then we can modify accordingly from there. Alright? So obviously Campy wants to go really fast. So we're gonna check the speedometer limiters first. Alright? So factory limiter set at 127 mile an hour. You can't have Campy limit to 127 mile an hour. You know, muscle car Campy has to be able to go faster. So we're gonna set the minimum speed to go to limiter at, we'll say 175. How's that Campy? That's good enough for me. You know, Tony, the first question everybody's gonna wanna ask is, how much horsepower am I gonna get? How much torque? Um, but that's not all there is to it, is there? No, the, the, one of the big things is your torque management. The torque management is probably the primary thing. Uh, without touching spark or fuel curves, torque management actually helps the car go faster. You know, a manufacturer does the torque management so things have a longer and longer life, but also to keep Grandpa Joe from stepping on the throttle and he drifts too fast and runs right through the front door target. So with that being said, the torque manager is there to dampen the throttle of else. We enhance that a little bit in the tune, so it feels better, dries better, and that's a big part of it. If the car feels better to you, even if it isn't super fast, it definitely is more fun to drive. Excellent. Would you say, I think before we were talking, you said maybe 18 horsepower, 22 pound-feet of torque? On the average, what we've seen on the Dyna with just a base tune, depending on the octane of the fuel, we've seen anywhere from 18 to 22 horsepower and about 30 foot-pounds of torque when you do a performance tune. And that's a beautiful thing and you know i run regular well, i used to run regular in it mm -hmm. um just because i was a cheapskate but then i noticed one day at the track the difference between when i was running 89 octane in it and 93 octane was almost three miles an hour in the quarter mile absolutely i was shocked the um, knock sensors are pulling timing on the cheaper fuel it will run fine you'll never notice the difference but if you're trying to get the best performance out of it you need to run a 93 octane um Definitely, 93 octane, the knock sensors don't pull the timing. And on some of the later cars, later model cars, they will add timing up to the point it sees detonation, so you get the best performance all the time. And I think another common misconception is that, well, geez, well, if 93 octane is good, 100 octane or 100 plus is even better, but that's not the case either if the car can't take advantage of it, correct? Correct. Uh, think of it as fuel as um, a density. Think of a density of the fuel. If you go to a race fuel, the reason that race fuel is more tolerant to spark detonation is because it's more dense. Okay, so the you put a denser fuel in a stock style vehicle, you actually will slow it down. It can't add enough timing to 
to work with that denser fuel. So you go slower if you run too much octane and fuel. Tony, let me ask you a question. You know, the EPA, um, you know, is very concerned about clean air. Um, frankly, I'm concerned about clean air. This car still has catalytic converters <coughs> on it. I, I like to think someday my kids will have clean air to breathe. Um, what is your take on the performance with catalytic converters? We have factory cars making 800 plus horsepower with catalytic converters. I personally think we should not take them off in most applications. And the reason is, is because it does clean the air, it burns the particulates off. Also, if you've ever driven around a car without cats and you get behind it, your clothes, your hair, everything's gonna smell like exhaust. I'm a firm believer in using the cats to their advantage. We've gone to great lengths testing at the racetrack on multiple car platforms and find the threshold for the temp cat so it doesn't go into over temp. Um, like the Mustangs, we know a certain temperature so they'll get through a quarter mile pass depending on the modification without it going to cat over temp. And we can set the cars up appropriately so it doesn't burn up the cats. The cats are still doing their job. We got a clean air going out the exhaust and we make the best of both worlds. Uh, we get people all the time call, hey, I want to take my cats off, make more power. doesn't work that way. You maybe see two or three horsepower, maybe, but with the expense of everything else, uh-uh. Plus, your device you're taking off, these things are selling for $1,100 a piece these days. So keep them on your car. Use them to your advantage. So your wife, your girlfriend, or your boyfriend wants to ride in the car, and it doesn't smell like fuel all the time. All right, really? Tony, what's, what's going on now? So we actually just wrote the file, meaning that we just wrote the modified file back to the PCM and the TCM. As you can see, we've completed that. At this point in time, we're ready to start the car, start looking at our data log, fuel trim, drive the car, or roll it on the dyno and see where we're at. And I'll show you how we set up the data logger as well. So. Hey, it still starts. That's always a good sign. <laughs> I had That's no fear. So in the data logger, the most important part of tuning a car, uh, whether the individual's doing it himself or he have a, has a tuner doing it, is the data logging. Um, the data logging tells you everything that's going on inside the engine. The only way to physically tell is to actually look at a spark plug, right? That's your only physical way to look at it. You can hear it running, but our data logger tells us everything. It tells us our idle RPM, it tells us our fuel trims. This right here is the most important part. This scanner is probably the most advanced right now in the tuning industry to do just this job. Um, I can see whether it has misfire counts. If you think you get a spark plug misfire and coil, something like that, it'll show up on your misfire count, counter right here. You'll see that. You can see if the fuel trims are messed up, if an O2 is messed up. Remember how sensors work. We have a narrow band sensor on most of these earlier cars that control your fuel trims at idle and park throttle. Newer cars are using wide bands to control it all the time, but in this case, the narrow band is doing its job two types of fuel trims. You have a short-term fuel trim and a long-term fuel trim. Your short-term fuel trims, basically think of a five gallon bucket. We drill a hole in the center of the bucket. We start filling that bucket with information. In this case, trim data. As it fills that bucket and it starts to come out that hole we drilled into it, that's our short-term fuel trim data. That's the most real time and the closest to what's actually happening at that time. As it spills out the top, that's the long-term fuel trim. That's your long-term memory stuff. And you can see the short terms are within two or three percent and the long terms are doing a little compensation to keep that at that point. So that's the idea behind short term and long term fuel trims and how they work. Think of it as adaptive memory. So essentially what you're doing here really takes the place of the, uh, the older car where the guy was jetting a carburetor, tuning a carburetor, advancing timing, things like that, except in such a super duper precise way, no one could ever do this with a carburetor. This is beyond, actually just totally beyond the scope of what that guy, no matter how good he was, could actually do. I'm that guy. Um, I started with the carburetor stuff and I can tell you if I had a wideband sensor in the 80s, I would be a billionaire um, because um, at the time I didn't have anything like that and it wasn't until the late 90s that we got an actual wideband we could afford. The wideband sensors allowed us to see exactly what the fuel was all the time, whether we're at idle or wide open throttle. Your newer Fords from 2011 up and your newer a Dodges now use uh, wideband sensors, obviously your Hellcat and your Demons use wideband sensors to control it, and your newer GMs are using wideband to control it, where it's a closed loop all the time. So if I tell it I want you know, 0.81 Lambda, it's gonna stay at that. 
So yeah, the technology has advanced to the point where we have so much precise control that our emissions are really good. That's why you don't see black stuff pouring out of all these, most of these race cars nowadays, is because everything is tuned almost perfection. On here, I'm looking at several things here. I can see where the fuel trims are. I can see the inlet air temperature. Obviously we're sitting here with the hood down, so the inlet temperature's hot. Um, we talk about cold air kits for a second. You remember people talk about plastic versus metal cold air kits? You ever heard this theory? And the metal one gets hot and retains the heat. So your map, mass airflow sensor sees it as a temperature reading of really hot, maybe 160 degrees. Well, if it's over 140, 150 degrees, it starts pulling timing. The plastic doesn't retain the heat, so it will stay less. When you start driving the car, that temperature is going to come down. So that's just a little tidbit about that. The fans are on earlier now, so we're running a little cooler, sitting around 210, 212 here, sitting in with the air conditioner on and everything else. So I think we're in good shape right now. So how's the car? This old girl, she seems to be, uh, I don't feel any misses or anything. Uh, everything look good under there? Absolutely. She's purring like a kitten. Um, you know, the biggest thing on this is when I'm looking at the data, when I see a car that's older, I look for O2s that are reading wrong. If it's an exhaust leak, it'll read wrong, things like that. Um, and it is smooth as silk. I did bump the idle up by 25. One of the things I like to do is I bump the factory idle up. Over the years, there's a little bit of deterioration. So I like to bring the idle up to compensate for that. So 25 to 50 is normally what I would bring up and you can see it smooths right out. Um, may have felt a little shape before that brings it up and takes past that initial fundament, fundamental frequency that was causing the shape. Um, efficiency data, we're looking good. All our charts are looking good. Uh, we've got all our trim data is looking good. I mean, this is really, you know, the car is obviously a stock car. We're just enhancing a little bit of what's there. So, hey, I've got a cane and filter under there too, buddy. It's oh, not well, just stock. So it's not stock. All right. So, you know, that, that was worth, did you put the sticker on the car somewhere? Oh, of course. Okay. That make, so that's another two, that was, two or three horsepower that was, that just was, with the sticker. It's 10 horsepower from the sticker. We, we got to go with that one right there. You know, we'll just say 10 horsepower and then, you know, who's going to prove us wrong, right? Go for it. So one of the things we wanted to accomplish was to turn off the torque management, but not turn all of it off. We want to keep those safeties there to keep the transmission in check and the rear end. We want to keep it underneath the car. It's a daily driven car, so we don't want to take out all the torque management. I don't recommend that. One thing we did want to disable is the active fuel management or DOD. With that disabled, now the lifters have a longer life expectancy. So one of the things we wanted to check when we drove it to see how it felt, as well as to see if we had any octane problems. Uh, octane does play a big effect on spark knock. If you're running an 87 octane and you're trying to put spark into it, you're going to get knock. Knock's going to pull timing. Pulls timing, you're putting your pedal on it, putting your foot on the pedal even more to make it go faster, and you're getting even more knock. So, highly recommend if you're going to do performance tuning, performance driving, put 93 octane into it or 91 in your area if you can. Try to get the best premium fuel that you can. All gas pumps are not the same. Your quality gas pumps are a little different. Uh, you want to make sure you're using quality fuel, not the cheap gas at the cheap gas station down the street. Doesn't matter if you're driving across country or not, I recommend higher octane fuel, keep the car in check, and with no knock, it means we're gonna make more power and a longer life expectancy of the engine. So test driving the car, one of the things we found is we did have some knock. The octane of the fuel was not up to par. So highly recommend a better fuel again to take care of that knock situation. So we were seeing a little knock. We were seeing two to three degrees of knock, upwards of seven degrees at that point. I went ahead and actually added a little bit more fuel on the top to take out some of the knock as a safety precaution to keep it in the lower, the mid to high 11s uh, on the air fuel ratio, just to keep it on the safe side. Um, if you're running better fuel, you can bring that up some for a little more power, but daily driven every day, keep it on the safer side. By running a better quality fuel, you're gonna have a longer life expectancy, a longer engine expectancy as well, and it's more fun to drive because you don't have a knock pulling the timing out. So it means less power with the knock coming out or more power with knock staying away. I would call this an unqualified success. If you've got any kind of a muscle car that's still stock, uh, Camaro, Mustang, GT, Challenger, Charger, Corvette, whatever, Tony can put the tune in for you and he does a fantastic job. He knows what he's doing. It could be anything from a stock car to a full-on race car and he can tune it. Uh, so there is that part of it. You don't have to have a stock performance vehicle to get the benefits from uh, Tony Gagnon and HP tuners.